Hello everyone, welcome to week 43 of Reasons to Hope. For 43 weeks now, we've been writing the Book of Hope together, taking time every week to just consider what is giving us reasons to hope, to stop every day and write down our daily five gratitudes in the Book of Hope. And last week, we had the privilege of talking with author Lori Smith, and she shared to us um, how she finds hope in the midst of chronic pain and illness. So I would love to hear from you in the comments today. How has Lori's message encouraged you this past week? What's giving you reasons to hope? Because today we have another very special guest. I'm super excited about this. So for the last few weeks, we've had a series on Root and Vine called Finding God in the Wilderness. And if you haven't checked it out yet, you can go to rootandvinenews.com, catch up on this really beautiful series. It's written by an author, speaker, mother of five, grandmother of 21. And those five children she has includes a set of twins and the 21 girl, grandchildren includes a set of quadruplets. She is married to her husband, John, who is a former pastor. They live in Falls Church, Virginia. He is retired now and they spend a lot of time in their farm. We're gonna hear a lot about what they do with their family and something called Cousins Camp. But without further ado, I'm gonna see if I can bring in the fabulous. And as she's joining, I'm just gonna get... Hello, Susan. Hey, it's good to see you, Kate. <laughs> so good to see you. Yay, we made it. We You're did. All... <laughs> <laughs> the interwebs. Well, where are you coming in from? I'm in Falls Church, Virginia, which is a Washington suburb. Beautiful. And how is the weather there? Have the leaves turned? It's gorgeous. And the leaves are probably the first third of turned. Maple okay. tree is red. So it's awesome. really awesome. Awesome. And have you gotten outside much to enjoy the autumn? I have. I went for a run today. I went for a hike this past week with a friend in the mountains of Virginia. So it's been beautiful. I'll tell you, your hiking is such an inspiration. I'm like, I got to get out there like Susan. And <laughs> I want to know, like, how did you start hiking? What brought you to, to go on these adventures? You know, I really didn't start. I started running first. And I played tennis. And then in my 60s, I just wasn't reliable enough to be on a tennis team because of my travel schedule. And my girls were all runners. They said, Mom, you should stop running. So I did. And then I found that I really love to run, not in the gym, but in the woods. And mm. I'm a nature bug. I, I don't run or hike with any earbuds or a phone. I mean, I have the phone in my pocket for emergencies, but it's the silence that I love. Because, you know, Kate, we, our, no, our world is so noisy. And I think mm -hmm. when we're in nature, we can really focus on the Lord in a fresh way because we don't have all the distractions. I love that. That is so true. So you talk about a few of your hikes on Finding God in the Wilderness on Root and Vine News, which I've loved following. And one of the hikes that you uh, brought out this past week, I believe, was one where you were in the Pacific Northwest. And I found, like, I love the Pacific Northwest. I think it's one of the most beautiful places in our country. And I love what you said. I'm going to read it. You said the Northwest wilderness is just that, raw and rugged. Its beauty is like nothing I've ever experienced. It brings new meaning to Moses in the wilderness, Jesus in the wilderness. Nature has a way of lifting the scriptures from black and white into technicolor. That is beautiful. <laughs> Tell me more about that. Tell me about what you saw that made you write that. Well, we have hiked. I have a friend, Melody, who's my hiking buddy, because our husbands don't go in for camping. Their idea of hiking is to go for a day hike and stay in a nice bed. <laughs> so I prefer pulling, you know, our, taking our stuff on our backs. And we've done two, two different sections of the Appalachian Trail and then three on the Pacific Northwest. And the difference in the AT and the Northwest is the AT is very well marked. It's beautiful. But the Northwest is not very well marked, and it's more rugged. So that's what struck me was the rawness of it. Mm -hmm. And we did it a couple of times, and it just reminded me of some of the raw wilderness in a way in Israel. And made me think of what it was like for Jesus and 
in his 40 days when he was tempted in the wilderness, what it was like for me to go out in the wilderness and how all of these folks sought the Lord in the wilderness. Mm. And again, one of the things that I love about hiking, well, there's so many things, but one of the things is the silence. Uh, often Melody and I will say, okay, we're not going to speak for an hour. We're just going to meditate as we walk. And we're going to look for that. And we're going to look for things in the woods that reflect the character of God. And this thing. And this past year, we decided to, for the hike that you were just referencing, we decided to memorize Psalm 8 before the hike. And just to see Psalm 8 come alive in our hike was amazing. Each of our hikes, we pick a verse sort of as a theme verse for our hike. And we really look on the heights for God's character to be revealed through nature. And it is. Mm -hmm. The sea reveal it. You know, just for example, in the winter, there, it's barren. It's cold. You could say mm -hmm. it's ugly in a way. But underneath that cold barrenness, God is creating an amazing thing that's going to burst forth just at the right time. And that's just a picture of how God is working while we're waiting. We can't always see what he's doing in our life, someone else's life. But nature reminds us that he's working while we're waiting. And at the proper time, which is often a little bit later than we wish it were <laughs> right now, but at the proper time, he will reveal his beauty. Hmm. That's so profound, especially heading into winter, which is not my favorite season. But <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, and, and I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm curious, um, what is giving you reasons to hope these days? You know, one of the things, again, that's giving me reasons to hope is that it's so easy to focus on our issues in life. I mean, at any different season, we all have one, two, or three hot prayer requests. And we go to the Lord, and we pray about them. And then as women, often we try to fix them, you know, mm -hmm. in our DNA. We have to be problem solvers as mothers. But what can so often happen is our issues become bigger in our head than our God. Mm -hmm. And what is to remember God's bigness. And that's what nature, being out in nature does. It reminds me of his power, his majesty, his attention to detail and how creative he is. And that gives me hope. We, we need the hope, which is often restored when we dwell and meditate on how big God is. And what that does is, the word that I've been just thinking about a lot lately, Kate, is perspective. It gets us out of our stuff and it focuses back on who God is. And it's not that our issues will go away. I mean, we're fallen people in a fallen world. But as we focus on the magnificence and the majesty of the Lord, our issues tend to take a proper perspective. They dim a little bit and begin to see God in his greatness in ways that perhaps we haven't before. Hmm. That's, That's so beautiful. Hope. That gives me hope. And I feel like <laughs> I forgot to mention you um, actually know what you're talking about because you've gone through a lot of this. You've been out on the trail and you've written 16 books, which I wanted to tell our audience they have to go out and check out your work. But one of those books that I'm really um, interested in reading is called Cousins Camp. Could you tell us about that? Yeah. Well, this book just came out last year, um, right in the middle of COVID, which is not a great time for a book to be <laughs> reunions. But for 11 years, my husband and I have hosted Cousin Camp, where we bring in our grandchildren and when we first started the first year, we had five children from three of our different families. And our purpose is to bond our kids together. You know, they live in different mm -hmm. states. And we want them to know each other and love one another. So parents are not allowed. And for our particular cousin camp, you have to be four to come because we don't want to deal with toddlers. And so once you reach four, and the kids wait till they're four. I mean, they want to come early. <laughs> So there's something about anticipating. When I get to be four, I get to go to cousin yes. camp. And our cousin camp runs for four days and three nights. And, you know, we went from beginning with five children to the last several years, we've had all 21 of our kids, grandkids. And it's a great time. So this book describes how we plan it, what we do, 
um, a whole schedule. It has Bible studies for kids in it. And it has a, a whole section also on other types of family reunions. You know, we did an adult reunion with four siblings and their spouses. And how did we find that so it was more than just chit-chat? There were some real creative things we were able to do. And then I tell other people's stories in the book. Um, I have a friend who, whose family is military in nature, and she planned a one-day uh, themed family reunion, giant family reunion around military stuff. And so there's a lot of variety in the book. Just a, a guide for people who want to get family members together, just to get you started on some things to think about. Mm, that's so cool. So when's your next cousin's camp? Well, we just decided because our grandkids now are bigger. The youngest are 10 and we've got three in college. So we're moving to the family camp over Labor Day week here. And that'll be really special. We had our first one this year. And now that the kids are used to cousin's camp, the kids take on a lot of the responsibility for planning activities for family camp but one thing that I realized Kate which might be helpful to some of our listeners is during this season where we've all had to isolate moms are going crazy you know give me something to do with my kids and so this past spring I see concepts out of the book cousin camp and I created a, an ebook called camp at 100 practical ideas for families and it's available on my website for free all you have to do, it's 11 pages, and it has 100 ideas to do with your kids, your grandkids, where, whatever their age, from top ages to how to have long-distance relationships. So if you just go to SusanAlexanderYates.com and sign up for Camp at Home, you can download it for free. I'm doing it. Awesome. All right. We can find more of your books and your work at SusanAlexanderYates.com? That's right. Is that where we should go? Okay. And don't forget, everyone, you can see all of Susan's series, Finding God in the Wilderness, at rootandvinenews.com. And there are so many reasons to hope that Susan has woven through these encounters that she's had on the trail. It's truly inspiring. Susan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's been great fun to chat with you, Kate. So wonderful. And as always, throughout the week, let's all encourage each other on the Root and Vine Instagram. Drop what's giving you reasons to hope in your posts or in our comments, hashtag reasons to hope, and we'll share those out next week. We'll see you all at 3 o'clock Eastern next Monday, as usual. Thank you, everyone. Have a beautiful week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.